This is your new source evening bulletin for today, Thursday, the 7th day of September in the year 2023. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting, and here's what we're tracking tonight. While welcoming a recent report by the Inter-American Development Bank, which noted that unemployment in the country has dropped to 12%, Vice President Mara Jagdew today said that that figure does not truly reflect the state of the country's unemployment statistics, and he believes it's much lower. Mr. Jagdio told the news conference that there has been a significant decrease in unemployment in the country over the last three years, noting that the government has made several interventions to ensure that people return to work, especially those who are reeling from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. I think it's underestimated that is the rate of unemployment now is even lower and the, the fall is not three percentage point, the drop from 2021, but actually it might be because they didn't capture, the 2020 data was hard to capture in the 2019, but that was just from 2021, although all, we had gotten back a lot of the people to work already, the COVID related people. So, so this is a constant worry of ours, that's why we keep pushing, you know. Jack Dio said the government tackled both structural unemployment and unemployment which was at a result of the pandemic. He said the construction sector and the government part-time job initiative alone account for more than 35,000 persons who were not previously employed, now working. In other areas, he said, such as mining and agriculture, the unemployment rate has also seen a marked reduction. So we managed to get people back to work. A lot who were unemployed in the mining sector and the sugar belt and many other areas have now gone back to work because we've changed the taxes. The uh, mining sector especially got a big boost. So we tackle structural un unemployment as well as the, the, um, the COVID-related unemployment. Then we, the new sectors that we started opening up, the new local content laws for the oil and gas industry, the housing boom. We returned to housing, we started building homes. You have about 20,000 people e easily who are working on constructing homes now that were not working there because under APNU, that was not being done. There was no housing program practically. And so imagine those 20,000 people that are working only in construction now and then another 15,000 part-time job. So it's tens of thousands of people more who are working today than were working in that time. The vice president said the majority of the employment opportunities has been benefiting young people, who he noted are excited to be contributing to the country's development. More news coming up in just a moment. It's been a long time coming. Overdue, some might say. But now that it's here, it will change life forever, and it is here to stay. The future is now. Transforming Guyana into the 21st century. Introducing GTT Fiber. Experience internet connectivity like never before. Speeds you deserve at prices you can afford from a name you can trust. Sign up today. GTT Fiber is here. GTT. Together, we rise faster. Oh my lord. I just love to shop in this store. My customers, them gonna love all these things. So many different things in one place. Household items, electronics, toys, stationery, confectionery, exercise equipment, shoes and clothes for men, women and children, school things, costume, jewelry, perfume, makeup. Oh, look the makeup. Giftland <laughs> Office Max, Guyana's favorite department store. Having your own car means peace of mind. Having your own car means comfort and convenience. Having your own car means freedom to get there on your own time. It's deal on wheels at Republic Bank. It's time to get that new vehicle or upgrade to a better one with Republic. Super low rates and low down payment. Up to eight years to repay and great prices. Come in to Republic Bank today. Republic Bank. We're the one for you. Buster! Buster flavor flavors! We're full of flavor, flavor, flavors! 
boss the flavors that my craver. We're full of flavors. Tell your neighbors about the boss the flavor flavors. Grab a boss the flavor flavor flavors. Yeah, taste Busta. Grab a Busta. Boss the flavor taste the savor. Busta. Boss the flavor flavors. Busta. Boss the flavor flavors. Are you looking for the best high school education at affordable fees? Then register your child today at the VYC Academy. Now enroll in grades 7, 8, and 9 students for the 2023-2024 academic year. VYC Academy, achieving academic excellence. For more information, call us on 227-1013 or WhatsApp us at 613-4806. Strong and solid, in countries far and wide. You in your assurance, we're standing by your side. Golden service, half a century and more. You in your assurance, our policies are secure. From the heart of India, we serve these islands. The strength that you can trust, you're safe when you come to. Assurance Company. Assurance when you need it most. For your home, motor or business insurance, visit New India Guyana office, 58 Brigdam next to Star Computers. Telephone 2260-4157. Comfortable parking available. The Madhya Dome Fire Commission of Inquiry has interviewed three persons as it continues its probe of the fire that claimed the lives of 20 children and left several more injured. The deadly fire took place back in May. The commission, which is chaired by retired Major General Joe Singh, has been in place for almost a month and has already visited the scene of the tragedy and met with residents who live nearby. In an interview with News Source, Secretary to the Commission, Javid Shadik, said there is a reluctance by some persons to testify before the Commission out of fear. He said the Commission wants persons of interest to know that there is absolutely nothing to fear in coming forward and offering information or evidence to the Commission of Inquiry. This Commission of Inquiry is not to place blame on anyone. This is just, as it says, an inquiry is to find out factually what happened and it is within the terms of reference and one of the greatest things about the inquiry is the recommendations um, what can be done to prevent such a tragedy from happening again um, so it's not something to fear the inquiry is not something to here. Mr. Shadik said the three-member commission has received a number of documents and reports from government ministries and agencies to aid in the completion of its work. We've been gathering information from all the ministries and we've been taking that min those information, all those reports that would have been written and we're sifting through those, identifying cross-referencing with our terms of reference to see which ones would be um, needed. And based on the information gathered, the Commission will be compiling a list of names of persons to offer testimony. We have persons who we took from the reports. Um, those parts, some of them have indicated yes, they're willing. And uh, there are other persons who are I should not say, be, say, say scared, but we will have to make special arrangements for those persons to speak um, to the commission. No date has been set as yet for public hearings. However, Shadik said that there is a possibility that the public hearings will begin mid-September. Due to the sensitive nature of the Commission of Inquiry, it was explained that while some testimonies will be streamed live over the internet, those involving survivors of the fire will be held in camera and therefore would not be broadcast. The post-mortem examination conducted on the bodies of the two men found floating near their boat in the Essequibo River has found that they both died from drowning, which was compounded by blunt trauma to the head.
The Ghana Police Force today said while investigations into the deaths of Vijay Lalmoni and Solendra Brookmahan are still ongoing, the indication is that they both died by drowning. The two men who worked at St. Mary's Quarry in the Essequibo River were reportedly on their way to Martika to purchase goods when tragedy struck. It is unclear what really took place. Both bodies were found in close proximity to their drifting boat, which still had its engine on idle mode. The families of the two men filed a police report after they did not return to work or home on Monday. The police said the bodies have since been handed over to the families of the two men for last rites. Having your own car means comfort and convenience. Having your own car means freedom to get there on your own time. It's deal on wheels at Republic Bank. It's time to get that new vehicle or upgrade to a better one with Republic. Super low rates and low down payment. Up to eight years to repay and great prices. Come in to Republic Bank today. Republic Bank. We're the one for you. The General Secretary of the People's Progressive Party, Vice President Bara Jagdio, today appeared not to be in agreement with President Irfanali meeting with the opposition leader unless there is a meeting for constitutional matters. Last week, the President said he is ready and willing to meet with the opposition leader at any time, although the two have not met in over a year on any issue. At a press conference today, Mr. Jagdeo said that the PPP has taken the decision and the position that it will work directly with the people and not with the opposition, despite the mounting calls for the two sides to engage each other. President Ali has made it clear he will meet any time with the opposition when they the matters relate to the performance of his constitutional duties as president. But if you want to talk power sharing, etc., you got to talk to the People's Progressive Party about this. And our position has been clear. Last week, outgoing U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Sarah Ann Lynch, said the U.S. is prepared to broker talks between the government and the opposition. President Ali has already said that there is no need for that, while the Vice President believes that it is unnecessary. Mr. Jack Deal said that PPP prefers to work directly with the people and not their elected representatives. But they're creating this narrative now that we must buy into. We must acknowledge that they are the ones who we have to work through. Never mind many of them are corrupt. Never mind they have no interest for the development of our country or afro -Ghanese. But the PPP must work through them. So Starbuck News says this is a representative democracy, not a direct democracy. So President Ali must not meet with the citizens. He has to go through Norton. Utter nonsense. Utter nonsense. That we must knowingly accept that they have no interest in developing Guyana or even afro guyanese communities but we must work through them. Jagdeo believes that persons are calling for inclusion not for the greater good of citizens, but to benefit their self-interest. He said the government will not be distracted by the calls for inclusion, since such a call is not based on facts. He questioned whether the coalition government was consulting with the PP while in government. 
Just last week, the Alliance for Change, which was part of the coalition government, reminded that the PPP was invited to sit on a number of government boards while it was in opposition. There has been no such request of the current opposition to sit on state boards. In the world of business and finance, a report coming out of the Inter-American Development Bank has indicated that more Guyanese are getting increased access to financing through commercial banks and other lending institutions. According to the Global and Regional Economies at the Crossroad Report, private sector credit reached 17% in February and March this year, before moderating slightly to almost 14% by May. In 2022, private sector credit grew by more than 15% in December, the report noted. The report also said that out of the three major lending categories, lending to businesses experienced the most growth, averaging 20% in 2022, while household credit showed high but lower levels of growth. Mortgages grew by 7.3% last year, and by May of this year, it grew to 14%. The IDB said the growth being experienced in all three lending categories suggests that there are robust economic activities unfolding in the country. The group said businesses make up most of the private sector lending portfolio, racking up up to 54% of total loans, followed by mortgages with 32% and households with 12%. It was noted that the country's financial system remains liquid and well capitalized, with improved quality of lending. The ratio of non-performing loans to gross loans of commercial banks dropped from 10.8% in 2020 to 4.7% last year. The report also indicates that net domestic credit steadily increased through 2022 and early this year. Net domestic credit includes lending to the private sector, net lending to the public sector, and net lending to non-bank financial institutions. Well, Suriname registered airline Fly Always is set to begin its new scheduled service between Guyana and Canada next Tuesday. The airline will operate twice weekly flights flying from Guyana on Mondays and Wednesdays. The flights from Canada to Guyana will be on Sundays and Tuesdays. In a statement, the airline said the flights will be direct flights with a 45 minute fuel stop in Punta Cana. According to the carrier, it is currently positioned to provide an unmatched journey that exceeds expectations. The airline added the route to its schedule after noticing a demand for flights between Georgetown and Toronto. Caribbean Airlines is currently the only airline that serves the Georgetown-Toronto route. The new Fly Always service will be operated on an Airbus A320 aircraft with a seating capacity of 180. The airline has announced that bookings can be made via its website flyalways.com or locally at its office at the Tower Hotel on Main Street. Guyot Super 95 Gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyot's Super 95 Gasoline. Sorry! Jack? Hey! Boys, where are you going with all that speed? Yo, know, today is the 15th, my NAS contributions are due, and I ain't even get the farms as yet. Hold on. You mean to tell me that you're not aware that all self-employed persons can now make their NIS contributions using the MMG app from the comforts of their homes and offices? Really? You know, I just pay my bills using MMG, you know? Yes, Jack, and the thing's simple. All you have to do is open the app, select pay bills, government services, NIS, and pay. They will prompt you to enter your NIS number, the month you're paying for, and the amount. So I don't need to submit any form? No. The only time you submit in a form is when you're making a claim. Wait, wait. I could make a claim too? Oh, no, man. You didn't know that? <laughs> yes. All self-employed persons are entitled to all benefits from NIS. Well, except for the industrial benefits. And here's the good part. All of their forms, you can download them from the NIS website. My girl, I'm really glad I won't pay to you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, make sure you pay your bills later. Later? I gotta sit down right here and pay my contributions right. first. Take care. 
For further information, please visit the website at www.nis.org.gy, the National Insurance Scheme Facebook page, or your nearest NIS office. Food Max Supermarket, located on the ground floor of the Giftland Mall, is your one-stop shop for all your grocery needs. We stock a variety of imported frozen meat and food products, fresh produce and pet supplies, freshly made bread, rotisserie chicken and patties are also available daily. Shop in comfort today at Food Max and let our courteous staff assist you in satisfying your shopping needs. Food Max, the fresh food specialist. It's one of your biggest goals, getting your own home, where memories are made, where happiness lives. You may feel that home ownership or renovation is beyond your reach, but we at Republic want you to know that there's always a way. Ask us about our suite of mortgages. Let's help make your housing wishes come true. Or advise on how the equity in your existing home can finance other dreams and goals. Call or go online to learn more. Look who's in the mix now. The new Busta Soda Water. Zero calories. Zero sugar. Zero artificial flavors. 100% refreshing. Taste Bust the Soda Water today. Bust the Soda Water. Now available for only $120. With your regional and international news tonight, I'm Svetlana Marshall. In the region, the Inter-American Development Bank says it has entered into three new partnerships with international development organizations to support the development of green bond markets in Latin America and the Caribbean and other emerging markets. The partnerships were announced during the Financing Commons Summit held this week in Trinidad and Tobago. The partnerships are part of efforts by the IDB and other international and regional development institutions to increase their level of cooperation to improve synergies and mobilize more private capital to help developing countries meet their commitments under the Paris Agreement and advance their sustainable development goals. The IDB said it teamed up with KFW Development Bank on behalf of the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development to create the Green Bond Partnership, GBP. It said the partnership will provide €2 million Euro for the IDB to finance measures to develop and promote standards, best practices and financial instruments to enhance the development of green bond markets in Latin America and the Caribbean. Barbados today in a report said Barbadians could have access to a basket of healthy food options at more affordable prices, although exactly when that will be is uncertain. Minister of Energy and Business Development Senator Lisa Cummins disclosed on Wednesday that the government is working on lowering taxes on healthy foods. In her address at the opening of the Barbados Childhood Obesity Prevention Coalition workshop, Cummins said the time had come for a review of the tax structure in healthy foods. She said the government will make good on its commitment to implement the recommendations from a recent research, which called on the authorities to review the cost structure, including taxes, for healthier foods versus unhealthy foods. In 2022, the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Barbados commissioned the study, led by Deputy Principal of UE Cave Hill Campus, Professor Winston Moore, and lecturer Dr. Antonia Allen, to examine whether food prices were prohibitive to healthy eating and to recommend a policy approach to making healthy foods more affordable. And finally tonight, international news. The U.S. has announced that it will send controversial weapons to Ukraine as part of more than $1 billion in military and humanitarian aid. Russia condemned the move to equip U.S. Abrams tanks with shells strong enough to pierce conventional tank armor. They're made of depleted uranium, a byproduct of uranium enrichment stripped of most radioactive material. Overnight, suspected Ukrainian drone attacks were reported on the Russian city of Rostov and Don and near Moscow. Unconfirmed videos showed what appeared to be a blast in central Rostov, where, according to the governor, one person was injured and several cars were damaged. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Svetlana Marshall reporting and encouraging you to stay safe. <laughs>